Okay, this lesson we're going to learn about angles. You guys have learned about angles before, but these are great reminders. An angle is formed by two rays. So in this picture, you'll see two separate rays, R, S, and ray R, T. An angle um, are those two rays starting at the same end point. When it's an angle, we call that a vertex. Um, and now you can name an angle in many ways. So we have ways to name segments, lines, planes, points, and... Uh, all those other things, but now we have ways to name angles. The first way is to name it by its vertex. So I could call this angle R because its vertex is R. I could also name it by its three points, SRT or TRS. Or if there's a number, number written on the inside, I can call it angle R. It's important to notice when we use three letters to name our angles that the middle letter will always be the vertex. So this angle could not be um, TSR. R must be in the middle. Okay. Um, when we look at an angle, you'll see there's two regions. There's an area inside the angle. So any point laying between the two rays would be considered inside the angle or the interior. Any point outside of the two rays would be considered the exterior. But when we name an angle, it's important that if the angle looks different, we can't name this angle Y. If I said angle Y, you wouldn't know if I was talking about this angle, this angle, or the whole thing. So if more than one angle is connected to the vertex, you must use three letters to name that angle. So let's look at an example on how we name different angles. <clears throat> In this diagram, you'll see numerous angles and there's a couple ways to name each of them. If I wanted to name just this top part, I could call it angle QTR, or I could call it angle 1. If I wanted to do the bottom, I could call it RTS, or angle 2. There's also one big angle containing both of them that we could call STQ. Just like with planes, it's okay to switch these letters as long as the vertex stays in the middle. So this could be QTR, this could be RTS, and this could be QTS, and it would be fine. <clears throat> okay, you guys know about measuring an angle. The measure of an angle, we use degrees, and there's 360 degrees in a circle. So one degree would be one 360th of that circle. We had a ruler postulate that gave a segment a measure. The same thing happens with a protractor postulate. All that does for us is give us a measure to an angle. So if we want to use the protractor postulate <clears throat> to give an angle a measure, just like you would use an ang or a protractor, you'd line one of the rays on the side of the protractor <clears throat> and use the second ray to figure out its measure. So wherever C hits on the angle gives us the measure for that angle. The types of angles we have, um, this is also familiar to you, but we want to remind ourselves. We have acute angles, so any angle less than 90 degrees is going to be an acute angle. Exactly 90 degrees is a right angle. Obtuse angles are greater than 90, but less than 180. If a, angle has 180 degrees, we call it a straight angle, you'll notice that that angle does create a straight line. So let's practice um, finding the measure of an angle and then classifying it by its measure. So if it says find the measure of WXZ, here's W, or V, excuse me, WXV, we see that XV is on zero. Since we're on the right side of the protractor, we're going to use these numbers, and we see that that angle goes from 0 to 30. So WXV is 30 degrees, so if we wanted to classify that, 30 is less than 90, so that is an acute angle. Let's try another one. ZXW, notice neither of those are on 0, so we're going to have to take where one spot is minus another. So if we want to start where where is ray XZ? I see that ray XZ on the bottom is at 130 degrees. So I'm going to take 130 minus where XW is 
at 30 and get 100. Okay, so just like we did the length of a segment, uh, we're going to take one minus the other and take the absolute value. So if I had started here, I could have said um, 150, where W is, minus 50, and I'd also get 100. Okay, so if, since 100 is bigger than 90, we're going to call that angle obtuse. Just like with congruent segments, we used a dash or a tick mark to show congruence. We can also show that angles have the exact same measure. So congruent still means equal measures. And if two angles have the same degree measure, we say that they're congruent. That statement, angle congruent to another angle. To show a measure of an angle, we put the M in front of it. And in a picture, to show congruence, we use arch or arc marks. So everything from here on out is the same as what we learned in the last lesson, but with angles. So we had the segment addition postulate, part plus part equals whole. Now we're going to have the angle addition postulate, which is also part plus part equals whole, but with angles. So here's our angle addition postulate. We have the blue part plus the red part should give us the whole measure, PQR. So let's try a couple of examples. This example tells us that angle DEG, notice that's the whole angle, is 115 degrees. And it says DEF, one of the parts, is 48. And we're going to find FEG, the other part. So with angle addition postulate, we say a whole equals a part plus a part. Substitute our measures. DEG is 115. DEF is 48. And we're looking for FEG. Subtract 48 from both sides to get angle FEG by itself. Simplify, and we see that the measure of FEG should be 167. Just like we had segment bisectors last class, we also have what are called angle bisectors. So anything um, that divides an angle into two halves. So in this picture, we have angle LJM in blue, and it's saying JK this is ray JK is bisecting or cutting LJM in half. So if it cuts it in half, we can say that the two halves have equal measures or their angles are congruent. So let's use that to solve a problem. First it says that segment KM bisects JKL. And then it gives us the measure JKM. In the picture I see that that's a half and MKL, which is another half. So we want to say, what do we know about these two measures? They're equal to each other. Find JKM. I don't know JKM because it has an X. So the first thing we're going to do is find X. Using the definition of angle bisector, I know that the two halves are equal. I'll take the measures they gave me for those angles. Then I'm going to solve for X. Okay, so normally I would start with the x, but you can start with the numbers. So I'll move 12 over by adding it to both sides. So I have 7x left here and 4x plus 18. Subtract 4x from both sides. We've got an 18 on the left and 3x, and then divide by 3. So if x equals 6, I'm going to go back to the problem and see that it asked for the measure of jkm. Well, the problem told me that jkm's measure was 4x plus 6 and I just found out that x was equal to 6. So I'm going to substitute 6 in for x and see that that measure is 30 degrees. Since this is kind of tough, we're going to do another example similar to this. This time it says find the measure of each angle. QS bisects angle PQR and the measure of PQS is 5y minus 1 and the measure of angle PQR is 8Y plus 12. I cannot keep all those letters straight, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. If it tells me that PQR is being bisected by QS, the first thing I'm going to draw is angle PQR bisected by QS. Since they told me bisect, my next thought should be that both halves are congruent. So I'm going to use congruent marks to show that the two halves of the angles are congruent. 
Now it says that PQS is 5Y minus 1. So I'm going to write that in my picture. This angle that they just gave me was 5Y minus 1. Well, I just said that these two had the same measure, so I'm going to write 5Y minus 1 in for the other angle because they are congruent. The last thing says that the whole measure, PQR, is 8y plus 12. So I'm going to say the whole measure is 8y plus 12. Now, I need to find the y value. There's two ways to set up this equation. I see two relationships. I know that this half plus this half equals the whole. Since it didn't give me two separate values for the halves, I can't set this equal to itself. That won't work. So the first way we're going to find y, using the definition of angle bisector, since the two halves are cut in half, or the whole with a bisector is cut into two halves. So the whole angle should be equal, or no, the half should be equal to half of the whole. So PQS was one half, should be equal to half of the whole angle PQR. So if we plug those measures in, PQS was 5y minus 1, PQR is 8y plus 12. So half of the whole should give us the halves measure. Distribute the half. Half of 8 is 4. Half of 12 is 6. Next, we want to sub get the all the y's on one side. So pick the smaller of the two and subtract. Add 1 to both sides, and you see that y is 7. Let's look at an alternate way to find the value of y. This is the way that I saw it, because it's similar to the betweenness concept. If I think part plus part equals whole, I'm going to say that a half plus both halves were equal to 5y minus 1, so I'll say 5y minus 1 plus another 5y minus 1 should equal the whole measure, 8y plus 12. On the left side, we can combine like terms. We have two y's on the left. 5y and 5y gives us 10y. I have minus 1 minus 1 on the left as well, which gives us minus 2. Now we're going to subtract 8y from both sides to move all the y's to one side. Add 2 to both sides, and then divide by 2, and y is 7. Now remember, the problem asks for the measure of PQS. So we found the missing piece, the y. Now we go back and see to find PQS. The measure they gave me for was 5y minus 1. <clears throat> and if y is 7, I'm going to replace y with the 7 and simplify. So the value of the angle they asked for was 34. Take this concept slow. We'll work on it, work on it in class as well. Have a good night.